guys welcome back to my channel today's video is definitely going to be one that is a little bit different i think for this channel but it's something that i've been wanting to talk about and really more so needing to talk about just for myself to get it out there maybe help somebody going through it and to be able to kind of let you guys in more on my life this video is my back surgery journey how it's basically a continuing journey that i don't think is ever gonna end but we can all hope and pray one day that maybe it does let me take you back Okay, I think, how old am I? I'm gonna be 26. So let me take you back about almost 12 years because when I got my first back surgery, I was 14 years old and that was something that I never thought I would ever have to have. And I don't think anybody just is like, oh yeah, I'm 14, now I get back surgery. It was definitely a process leading up to it and I kind of want to do a deep dive into that to kind of give you guys more, I guess, just more backstory about it. So I was... I want to say I was 12 when I really first started noticing the back pain. Now, about a year into it, I actually started to get really, really bad leg pain. And so what I was having is called sciatica. And sciatica, basically, there are nerves that run down your spine. And so the, from here, they kind of branch out um, into your pelvis and down into your legs. And what was happening that I found out later on was that one of my vertebral discs, so one of the little, um, I think it's made of cartilage, I'd have to look. One of the cartilage discs in my back was actually popping out and considered bulging. I had a disc herniation is what it's called. And that was actually pressing like smack up against my nerve, which was cutting off to my leg. And so what that caused pretty much was a bunch of pain, back pain, but also um, severe burning. I have a good chunk of my leg, probably a solid five or six inches, like right on my hamstring that is just numb. Like I can't feel it, the nerves are dead. I also get, uh, it feels more like just really just burning, tingling. It goes all the way down to my foot and it stops, it weirdly stops right at the arch of my foot. I'm not sure why. It doesn't really go to my toes, but for the main, my main symptom, Symptom. Hi, Bebby. My main symptom is the burning leg. It doesn't happen to both legs. It's really just my one leg. That's what I had before my surgery. And uh, really up until this point, I it's never gotten better. It was better for maybe a year after my surgery. But, excuse me. So let's start with pretty much the pain is what led me to be like, okay, something's not right. Like I am in constant pain. My back hurts so bad. I mean, as a 12 year old, I should be able to walk, run, play all that just fine. And I was not, I was, that was something I was not able to do. I pushed myself quite a bit because I was in basketball for two years. I did a lot of sports growing up. And so that could have potentially led to why it also obviously could have be genetic. I just maybe had really bad genetics when it came to my back we don't really know there's there was no there was no way to pinpoint exactly what like when this started so to me it was kind of just like hey one day i noticed it was worse than others and i was like i don't like this anymore i want to see a doctor about it and so my mom started taking me to doctors <sighs> And let me tell you, when I say I have been poked, prodded, scanned, and seen by probably at least, I want to say like 15, 20 different doctors, I'm not exaggerating. From the moment I walked in, they were all just like, they had never seen, their, or at least the ones I went to, I guess, had never seen something like this. And it took them forever to even potentially give me a diagnosis. And the funny thing was, they weren't even the ones who made my diagnosis. I made my own diagnosis based on one of my old history teachers having a herniated disc like she was literally like she came in the class one day and was naming off all these things that she couldn't do because she was in so much pain and that she was getting surgery for it and i just remember going home and googling and i was like i'm pretty sure this is what i have everything lined up everything there was nothing that was like Oh, uh, nothing that led me to believe it could have been like an oh, uh, okay kind of thing. Like maybe. There was no maybe in my mind. It was, this is what I have. Now I need to make these doctors understand and believe me when I say this is what I have. Because I have, I had gotten the MRIs. Okay, I had gotten the CAT scans. I had gotten x-rays. Pretty much any imaging you can do, I had gotten. I had Every time I went to the doctor, they drew my blood. They wanted to see if there was something, maybe that was the problem. I don't, whatever they wanted to check, I had gotten it all 
by the time I was 14. And by the time I was 14 or 13, technically, I was like, listen, I literally walked in. I handed them a paper that I had my mom. Like I had either printed out at school or I had my mom printed out. And it said herniated disc. And they kind of just... I think looked at me weird because how could a 14 year old have a herniated disc? Trust me, we're all wondering the same thing because that's ridiculous, 14 years old. Um, the average age for someone who gets a herniated disc is I believe between like 40 and 60. So here I was 14 and I don't know what prompted it, but they finally looked at my MRI and they were like, oh yeah, you do have a herniated disc. And I was just like, I felt mad that my own doctors who I had seen continually for like a year and a half couldn't diagnose me with that and i had to do it myself but i was also so relieved because here i was i had an answer i had the reason why i was in all this pain so once i had a diagnosis it was pretty clear to my doctors that i i mean surgery was potential at this point it was a possibility it wasn't like we get a herniated disc, boom, surgery. That's not how they ever play it out because insurance will never let you play it out like that. When I tell you <laughs> insurance is just insurance, everybody understands, I would hope. Like you feel me when I say insurance is insurance. It's just, you have to jump through so many hoops to be able to get pre-approved for surgery so they'll cover it. So what I had to do in my state, um, I live in Kansas. In Kansas, I'm not sure how it is anywhere else. Obviously, I don't know because I don't live in, I've never lived anywhere else. You have to get a diagnosis. Then you have to be seen by a back surgeon and the back surgeon has to kind of give his plan of action pretty much. And then you have to go through not only physical therapy, but you also have to go through epidural steroid injections, which they're not horrible. It's to me, I'm, I'm, I've am i always been interested in the medical field, so I never had an issue being poked. I mean, when I got him, I was 14 and I remember the doctor telling me, hey, do you want to watch? And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, I do. And so he turned the screen and then it was, I swear to God, it was probably a needle that was about maybe four to five inches long, if that it just maybe it seemed bigger to me at that point i'm not sure but it, you could see where he was putting it in and where it was going into my spine and that was probably the coolest thing but i had to get three of those and they didn't do anything but the doctors all kind of knew that it wouldn't do anything at this point they kind of hoped that it would because sometimes epidural steroid injections will shrink the disc i guess is what how i understand it or it'll help with the pain um but that did not that was not my case i got the epidural steroid injections and I just felt the same and I was like okay this isn't working so then we had that out of the way then I had to do physical therapy for six months and when I was going I was going if I remember right two or three times a week and I would see the same physical therapist and she would like present this plan every like month or something like an updated plan to where you know we're trying these things okay now we're trying these things maybe we try hydrotherapy maybe we try whatever because at that point i wasn't really exercising i mean i was in like eighth grade I believe at that point. So I wasn't really like exercising regularly. I didn't like obviously go to a gym. I wasn't in any sports because of my pain. And those of you who live with chronic pain or have ever dealt with chronic pain, you understand that sometimes you just can't do the things you wanna do. Because for me at least, even just walking around school all day was so exhausting. I can't even uh, like put into words how exhausting it was just to go from classroom to classroom to classroom and sit. That was exhausting to me. And it still is like walking, um, running, any kind of high like physical exercise, which I now do a lot of because I feel like it's better for me is exhausting. Like when I get home, I don't want to do anything. I just want to lay in bed, put my heating pad on and call it a day. So for me, you know, I wasn't exercising. So physical therapy was really like my only exercise, which we didn't even really exercise. We just did a bunch of like movements, dynamic movements and stretches to hopefully help ease the pain. That all comes and goes within the span of six months. So I go to my back surgeon and I'm like, okay, so none of this is working. This physical therapy did nothing. Steroid injections, nothing. That's when he suggests surgery. And I was like, okay. Probably within like a month to a month and a half, I was scheduled out for surgery, which honestly, I'm glad I got the first surgery because it's just like, it helped me for at least a year and a half of where I was living with no pain. I had occasional back pain, but like, honestly, it was very minuscule to what I had been experiencing. And so after about a year and a half, I got really discouraged and disappointed that 
that I had now had this pain back. I had this leg pain and I was like, if the leg pain wasn't there, I could deal with everything else. I could deal with the back and the fatigue and the exhaustion and all that. If the leg pain was not there, the leg pain is what gets me. It's one of those things that is constant. When I say constant, I mean, I don't mean there's like little breaks here and there. I mean, there is an ever growing presence of my leg pain. It never goes away. It doesn't go away when I'm sleeping. It doesn't go away when I'm out and about. I can exercise five times a week and I still have. I can do all the things like physical therapy and steroid injections and I still have it. That's my problem. So I wanted to kind of give also in this video some tips if you also deal with chronic pain. I would love to hear how you guys, if you do, um, deal with any kind of chronic pain, like especially back pain, how you deal with it. I've learned over the years that with the things that are causing my back pain, right, there's a very minuscule amount of stuff that will actually take the pain away, even if for a brief time. So, you know, ibuprofen, Tylenol, that stuff, it, it like does nothing. It lowers the pain maybe by like 2% and that's it. Sometimes I only use it for my back because I just don't want to have the back pain associated with the leg pain. It's way too overwhelming at times. Um, some other things that I have tried are a heating pad. I used to use heating pads a lot and then I recently bought a new one and I've been using that quite a bit and it's one that can completely like wrap around my leg so that's very nice. It's like an XL one. It's huge and I love it. Um, again, it's something that doesn't, it just kind of like, you know, pacifies it for maybe a brief moment. It's something that gets my mind off of it enough to where I don't notice it's there but it's always there. I've tried muscle relaxers. Those just put you to sleep. Um, those are the things I would use if you know I just wanted to sleep and be rid of the pain for a brief period. I don't recommend it for everybody. I was given when I was 14 I was given hydrocodone which is a very strong uh, narcotic. I believe it's a narcotic opioid narcotic. I was also I was just very conscious about how much I was using it and I literally only used it when I absolutely felt like I had to have it because I didn't want to form an addiction to it. I had I have grown up around um, adults who had addiction and I didn't want to go down that road and so I wasn't going to let myself go down that road and I finally cut myself off just because I didn't want to you know further that in any way so I had to kick that goodbye it helped but again it just kind of helped me sleep um helped me get a deeper sleep to where I wouldn't be disturbed by the pain or woken up by it but I've tried that over-the-counter meds um heating pad and then um chiropractor has been my newest one I've been seeing my chiropractor now for I think like three ish years three years it's helped mainly with my neck pain though my back pain is always there it's ever present and he does adjust my back um it's mainly my upper back and then my neck because these things right here on my chest these fat sacks are so heavy that they kind of pull me forward so my whole spine is like like literally if you looked at my spine it's like that and it should be like this but it's basically just like straight so my spine does not sit the way it should it never has i've always had that issue chiropractor really just makes my neck feel better and that's about it um i only go to see him maybe twice a month once or twice a month if i feel like i need my neck pop. Some other things that I've tried, I had noticed recently that I had been using alcohol as more of a crutch and I had to stop myself from doing that as well um, because I didn't want that to turn into a, an addiction or you know I didn't want that to basically take over my life which was not hard for me to do because I was just like, for some reason in my mind when I'm like, this could cause me problem, major problems and I cut it off, I will only pick it up again in like social situations or maybe if like one day a week I come home and have a drink now. So I was using it for a, probably about a month's period there too. Every night I was coming home and making myself a drink because the pain was so great and I was just like, can't do it. Like I can't handle this. Like you can take all the baths in the world, hot baths, eating pads, um, over the counter medicine, you know, whatever, whatever you're it is it's so specific to each person and i know that and so it's like like trust me when i say i've tried pretty much every unfortunately this past month two months or it was last it was a month ago today actually i went and saw my doctor again i had to wait two months to get an appointment with him pretty sure i made the appointment in january and I, it wasn't until april 6 so we went and saw him i had just gotten a new mri done um, so that he could get an updated look at what my spine looked like and I'll I'll insert a picture somewhere somewhere in here what it looks like It's not gonna be my actual spine because I don't have a CD player uh, or a DVD player on my laptop So I can't actually access my MRI. But I'll show you kind of what it is basically my disc I think it's the one that I had surgery on the first time if I remember correctly I think it's the same one I had surgery on the first time. It is so dehydrated to the point where it is black. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I put the picture up. It's basically just a lack at this point. And that's not normal. <laughs> that shouldn't that shouldn't be happening to a 25 year old if you're catching my drift. That along with pretty much the shape of my spine and you know some narrowing of my spinal cord, the back surgeon 
recommended that I get a another surgery. I mean, I feel like I saw the news coming, so it wasn't like a huge surprise to me. But this time, he said that I would need to get spinal fusion. So spinal fusion is when they basically take rods, okay, probably like this big, and they take two of them, and they screw them into your, your vertebrae um, on either side of the disc that is affected. So f in this case, it would be my L5 and my S1, which is the very top of my sacrum. And so what they would do is they would take these rods and they would screw them into those bones. And over time, the bones would all just become one. They would fuse together, thus spinal fusion. Usually, again, this is something that does not happen, you know, on 25 year olds. Like the average age of someone who gets has to have a spinal fusion or get spinal stenosis which is the narrowing of the spinal cord is like 65. that's fun i'm not really too excited about that because once i have the surgery i'll be out for two weeks pretty much the only thing i can do is walk around my house that would be really the extent of my movement obviously each day it's going to get a little bit better and a little bit better <sighs> The only redeeming quality of this whole situation is that he said that my leg pain should go away instantaneously because what has happened essentially is that my disc is dehydrated and like the joint part of my vertebrae has overcompensated and overgrown and that is now what is pressing on my nerve. I know it's very confusing. <laughs> Trust me, when he pointed it out, I was like, what? Essentially, if I can mimic it, here is like the overgrowth and here's my my nerve and it's kind of just like pushing into it and that's what's causing the leg pain so he would go in and remove that and put the rod um he did say it could take between three to five percent of my mobility which isn't really a whole lot when it's considered but it is quite a big recovery time it could be six weeks before i lose the back pain altogether um could take up to six months before i could you know get back into my normal routine of things so i'm not excited about that because i do work out like three days three to five days a week five days on a good week other than that like who knows how long it could take before i might be able to exercise again which really puts a damper in my goal to lose weight it makes me kind of work want to work even harder up until the point that i do get surgery because you know some things have gone down in my personal life at this point in time to where we're like I at least for me I feel like I'm scrambling to put things together and get things figured out and all of that because my original plan was to get it this summer but that might not be a possibility at this point I'm not sure I maybe can um I plan on hopefully doing a CNA program this summer and my goal was to do that at the beginning of the summer do my CPR class and then take the rest of the summer off and hopefully get surgery in July. Will that happen? I'm not exactly sure. We have yet to find out. So really the road to this new surgery is going to be almost the exact same as the road from the last surgery. I'll probably have to get epidural steroid injections again. I may or may not have to go through physical therapy. I'm not quite sure. I may just do it to be safe so that when I do submit it to insurance, they can just immediately approve it pretty much. They don't have to like question whether or not like I do need it, which to me, it kind of baffles me that I would need to go through all these things to prove they don't work when I've already had them once and they don't work. I've actually had epidural steroid injections multiple times throughout the past 12 years. It baffles me that they can't really just like look at the MRI and see the report from the surgeon saying that I just need to get rods in my back to be like, okay, yeah, she probably needs surgery, but whatever. I'm going to let them do their thing. I'm, I got to get the epidural steroid injections. If that's what I have to do, that's what I'm going to do. If I have to get, you know, a brief stint of physical therapy, I can do that too. Um, I'm assuming after my surgery, I'll probably also have to get physical therapy as well. If probably a few times a week, maybe I'm not quite sure. That wasn't really discussed obviously because we were waiting on approval and I had some injuries insurance issues come up but hopefully now I can resubmit it come June 1st so <laughs> fingers crossed I know this is probably a pretty maybe not too lengthy of a video but I just kind of wanted to share this with everybody like especially if you're going through chronic pain trust me you're not alone. Um, I always used to think I was the weird odd man out because who else my age has had a herniated disc for one and is now in a stage where they need to get rods put in their back at 25. So it's definitely discouraging being this young and needing like all these different medical things. <sighs> It kind of sucks sometimes, but I know that once I get it done, I will be probably a thousand times happier without having to endure that pain day in and day out. I mean, it could eventually, the back pain at least, could 
return. At this point, I wouldn't expect any less because it already returned the first time. Hopefully, removing that part of my vertebrae or joint or whatever will just keep that leg pain gone. It could also be another thing where I get a bunch of scar tissue in that area and that causes more leg pain, which would also suck. So it's kind of like a toss-up when you get surgery, especially like a back surgery or a spinal surgery, whether or not it's going to actually relieve the pain. I really hope it does. My fingers are crossed, fingers and toes at this point, that I can get approved for surgery, get it done, and be healed enough to go and do nursing school in the fall. Yeah, I hope you guys learned more about me in this video. It's definitely a big part of my life that I don't really talk about too much because it's in, in my life, I feel like I've talked about it so much that everybody's just sick of hearing it. It's nice to get it off my chest and be like, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. Uh, if, if you're going through that, any kind of chronic pain, I feel for you, I truly do. Like this is not something to be taken lightly. Like you should never just give up like I, I can't even tell you how many doctors I had tell me well there's nothing there there's nothing wrong there's there's we're not seeing we don't know we can't tell you what's wrong because we don't see anything and it, it had to take me googling it advocating for myself and my mom advocating for me to say this is what I have you need to look at this you need to look for this um whether you believe me or not you need to look for this and it ended up being that I was right I was correct in my diagnosis which is odd and not normally a thing that happens, but just know that if the doctor's telling you that there's nothing wrong with you and you clearly know that you're in pain or you are suffering in any way, make them look harder. Make them look at the things that they would never guess because they were never probably going to guess that I had a herniated disc because I was 14 years old. You just have to advocate for yourself or have a family member do it if you're, you know, super young. Have someone that is your support system and your, your person to speak up and say, hey, listen, this is what we think it is. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I am going to start making a few, I got a few different series coming, two different series that I wanna start on my channel. One is like a true crime because I'm really into true crime and I would love to deep dive into some of the lesser known, you know, true crime cases here and all around the world. And then my second one is a series on adulting and how to and how not to be successful as an adult. So look out for those and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye. Bye.